I'm Richard Burke, the CEO of Envoy Global, based in Chicago. We help companies with their visa and immigration needs, and we do that by providing uh, top flight lawyering with uh, proprietary uh, purpose-built technology to simplify and expedite the process of securing work authorization either in the United States or in any other uh, jurisdiction and then tracking those people uh, during the uh, while they have the work authorization. We've experienced many challenges since joining uh, Envoy. Uh, luckily the things are going very well but the challenges were born of being very, very open. We wanted to be, we say one of our values is we're a work in uh, progress. We always want to be testing things out, trying new things, and learning. So some of the challenges, I was brand new, the folks didn't know me as a leader, didn't have any reason to trust me, and we tried a diff couple different things. Some worked and some didn't, and when those things didn't work, you have painful changes that you need to go through uh, to, to correct and apply your learnings and apply the data to go on a better course. And for the first year or two, people were like, well, wait, I don't really know Burke. Uh, why should I trust Burke? And I had to earn their trust and earn their credibility. So it was a challenge for leadership to be able to do that. Um, and some of those changes, particularly in our business, were we want to cater to employment-based immigration, where we sell to companies and help companies hire people, or we want to do family-based immigration. We had to test out both. Within, we settled on employment-based. Also, within employment, do we want to sell to small companies or bigger companies? And there's positives and negatives to both, and we had to test those out. And so the biggest challenge I faced was doing smart tests that would tell us the right answer and then being able to say, we made that decision right, we made that decision wrong, how do we correct the bad decision? I got two pieces of feedback that were the best. One was to look in the mirror. And what that meant was you've got to be very, very candid with yourself about what your strengths and weaknesses are. And unless you're going to be ruthless about addressing those weaknesses, you're never going to be as successful as you wish. And for me, those weaknesses were two areas. One was substantive. I needed to learn uh, business and the language of business. So I was able to find some classes back in the day. University of Chicago had a program at night where you could take accounting and corporate finance. And I did that on my own just to learn this language that all the business people were speaking. The other one was more of a personal flaw. And that personal flaw was I could be too a bit too conciliatory, a bit too trying to find the middle ground and not being willing to stand up and make hard, the hard decision. And I had to spend quite a bit of time to be frank. Why does that happen? There's some positives to that behavior, but there's often negative. So being very candid about that and really holding myself accountable. So the uh, second piece of advice I got, a bit of an interesting story. Um, my, my wife and I were have, able to have dinner with Jamie Dimon, who's now the, the very famous uh, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. Back then, he was running First National Bank of Chicago. And we had dinner with him, and it was right at the time when I was migrating from being an attorney to being a business person, and very self-conscious that I didn't have an MBA and I didn't have all the formalized business training, and worried, how do I make that migration from being a lawyer to being a business leader? And so I, he asked me about my work, and I told him what, what I did. And I said, well, I'm really trying to figure out making this migration from being a lawyer to a business person. And I said, what advice would you give me, Jamie? And he paused for a second, he said, don't hire any yet. And I was like, I couldn't tell if he was being facetious and funny or whether he was serious. And I think he could tell I was a bit confused. He goes, no, I'm serious. Do not hire jerks. Because once you hire jerks, your culture goes to hell and everything else goes to hell along with it. And that's something that's really stuck with me with, uh, there's plenty of good people to be hired, but if you believe that companies are composed of the individuals, uh, if you've got a bad culture, you're never gonna be as successful as you'd like to be. And that's something that really resonated with me because I couldn't bring deep domain knowledge in the t form of sales expertise or tech expertise or product expertise. But if I could form a team that had a good culture comprised with strong, strong-minded people, but people who try to, you know, treated each other with respect and dignity, I thought would be more successful. And that was really great advice he gave me.